Hi, Clint Kins here with Anderson Business Advisors, and in this video segment, I'm going to discuss the difference between self-directed IRAs and solo 401ks. Now, if you're considering using your retirement assets for real estate investing, you've probably heard both of these terms before. You've been told that you can take existing retirement funds that are held inside of an IRA, roll them into a self-directed IRA, and you'll then have control over those funds to go out there and buy real estate or invest in tax liens and deeds and make private money mortgages. You can do a lot of things with your money when it's in a self-directed IRA because you have control of it. You've also been exposed to most likely a solo 401k. Now, solo 401k is different from a self-directed IRA in that a solo 401k is typically established off of a corporation or LLC or even a sole proprietor. So it has to be attributed to a business that you're currently engaged in or a business entity that you've set up. And then you would roll your IRA money into the solo 401k. And again, you would have control over those funds now to go out there and buy real estate, you could uh, tax invest in tax liens and deeds, and you could also do private money notes and mortgages, uh, hard money lending, uh, uh, things like that. So both entities offer you the ability to take control over your retirement funds. The question is, which one should you choose? Now, I can tell you from firsthand experience, someone who has been setting up qualified retirement plans like solo 401ks and profit sharing plans for over 19 years, that if given the choice, I'm going to choose the 401k over the self-directed IRA nine times out of 10. And if you're in that position right now and you just haven't been able to find the uh, amount of information that makes you feel comfortable about choosing one versus the other, this video then should demystify these two entities for you and give you some insight as to which one would be more appropriate for your type of investing. So let's just break it down for you. I like to look at the numbers. So you have here, we'll just put solo on this side, and over here we're going to put IRA right there, self-directed IRA. Now, if you just want to look at it just strictly from a contribution standpoint, how much money can you put into these entities on an annual basis? Well, if you set up a self-directed IRA, your maximum contribution is typically going to be about $5,500. With a 401k, solo 401k, your maximum contribution each year would be $53,000. Now, as you can see, it's 10 times more can go into the solo 401k versus the self-directed IRA. So if you're looking to make massive contributions to your retirement accounts, then I think you're going to want to go with the solo 401k. On top of that, with the self-directed IRA, this could be a traditional IRA or a Roth. Okay, so when you're making that contribution, you have to choose which one you're going to put the money into. With a solo 401k, of that $53,000 contribution, you can actually make $18,000 of it or have $18,000 of it allocated to a Roth account inside of your solo 401k. So you get the best of both here with this solo 401k. You can put money into a traditional account that is tax deferred, and you can also put money into a tax free account, which is your Roth component of your solo 401k. So between the two, if we're just strictly focusing on contributions, I'm going to give the nod to the solo 401k. You can put much more money into that over the self-directed IRA. So that would be contributions. Now, how about if you want to take money out of your IRA? Say you, you come up against an unforeseen expense with a property that you're currently under rehab with and you need some cash out, uh, let's say you needed uh, $300,000. sounds like a lot for an unexpected unexpe expense, but just bear with me here. So let's say you need $300,000 out of your uh, IRA or 401k. Which one's going to serve you better in that instance? Well, with the IRA, you can pull out an unlimited amount, okay, an unlimited amount of money for 60 days, all right? So if I had... Uh, a, a huge expense that was unforeseen and, and I knew I could get it paid back within 60 days, then that self-directed IRA, that's going to be a bonus for me. Because in the solo 401k, the maximum you can take out penalty free is only 50k. But the difference between the two is where this has to be repaid in 60 days, this has to be repaid within 60 months. 
So again, 10 times more, 10 times more on the contributions, 10 times longer on the repayment. So it really depends on what, what you're looking for here as far as having access to these funds for things that happen outside of the plans, outside of the IRA or outside of the solo 401k. So that would be taking money out of your plan. Another one is control. Which one offers you more control? Now the self-directed IRA, they've spent a lot of time, when I say they, I mean the industry itself, they spent a lot of time touting the benefits of using a self-directed IRA and that it gives you all this control to go out there and invest in real estate in a manner in which you just cannot do through a traditional IRA. Well, that's accurate, but it's not necessarily relevant to the way a lot of people like to invest. Because with a self-directed IRA, you do have control through, through that plan, that is you can invest in alternative types of investments that aren't permissible inside of a traditional IRA. However, in order to make these investments, you have to work through your administrator of your uh, IRA. So in this case, you have third-party administrators that handle most self-directed IRAs. That is the person you're setting your self-directed IRA up with. So if you saw a house that you wanted to buy, for instance, you would need to turn that over to this administrator and ask them to close on the deal for you. That is, you couldn't be signing the paperwork, the purchase and sale agreement. You couldn't be moving the money around because that money is all handled by the third party administrator who's going to be the custodian or use a custodian and they'll manage the account for you of your funds to put these types of investments together. So even though it's self-directed, you do not have full control. So there's no full control with a self-directed IRA. You always have to work through the IRA custodian. You have to work through that individual, that administrator, and ask them to handle your funds for you. Now this can slow up investing for sure if you're out there trying to put a deal together on a Saturday and you can't do it because you're not, you don't have access to the funds and you can't sign on behalf of your IRA, you got to turn it over to, to your custodian, your, your administrator to handle that transaction for you. So not there, there really isn't full control here. Whereas if the solo 401k, you would be the trustee of your plan. So as the trustee, you're the one that's in control of all of the monies inside of the solo 401k. Because a solo 401k is a, essentially a trust agreement. So trusts are controlled by the trustee. When you set up a plan, you're gonna name yourself as the trustee of your plan. So any monies you roll in to your plan or you contribute through uh, annual contributions, they will now be under your control. And so like the self-directed IRA, which will have an account with your solo 401k, you'll create a bank account in the name of your solo 401k and that's where you're gonna put your funds. It's a tax deferred account because it's held in the trust name. Now, when you open that account, you also get a checkbook with it. So you have the checkbook control over those funds. So if you saw a piece of property you wanted to buy, you as a trustee could enter into the purchase and sale agreement on behalf of the plan. You're the one that's authorized to sign it. You're the one that can write the check to put down the earnest money. You're the one who's gonna write the check to close on the property. You're the one that's gonna handle everything because that is what happens inside of a solo 401k. That control rests with the trustee, not through a third party. So with this type of plan, you have full control over all of your retirement assets here. So I would give, again, when you're looking at it here, I'm going to give the nod over here to the solo 401k over self-directed IRA if you want control over your retirement investing. Now, a lot of people who invest in real estate will oftentimes mor use mortgages, you know, use debt to acquire the property. They leverage it. So leverage is uh, permissible in both the self-directed IRA and the solo 401k. The only difference is that in this type of arrangement, you cannot personally guarantee the, the debt itself. It has to be a non-recourse loan. That is, if you default on the payment, then the creditor or the, the lender can only look to the property itself or the entity, IRA or solo 401k, for recovery. They can't go after you individually. So, in this type of arrangement here, if uh, we wanted to use debt financing, it is permissible. Let's say we went out and we bought a house uh, right over here. Let's say I bought this house and my IRA or my pension plan put in $100,000 towards the purchase price and we were able to finance it through a lender or maybe the uh, owner itself is carrying back the paper for hundred k So it's a $200,000 house and it was financed with hundred k and hundred k came from our plan. So we have 50% into this 
came from debt. So of the $200,000 purchase price, 50% came from debt, 100,000 we borrowed, and 50% came from our own contributions out of our plan. So the house would be titled in either the IRA or the solo 401k's name. Now the difference between the two when you're using debt is that with an IRA, then the debt portion is taxable. You heard me correct here. Debt portion is taxable. So here you have taxable uh, when using debt financing. Okay, so that happens when you're when you're using a self-directed IRA. And the way it would work here is, see on this, let's say this property generated thirty thousand dollars this year in income. Then what we would do is we'd say, all right, since fifty percent of that purchase price came from the use of debt. Half of this 30K, 15K, is now subject to taxation. And so the tax rate uh, in IRAs and, and uh, solo 401Ks, basically, once you hit $12,000, you're at 39.6%. You get the highest marginal rate you, you get uh, once you're over $12,000. So as you see here, you know, you're making 15K, but a, that money inside of that plan, that 15K that you made, is going to be subject to taxation. Your IRA must file form 1099-T each year. Now this is a problem. There's a lot of real estate investors that have done this, use debt inside of their IRA, and they have not been filing this form and paying the taxes on that debt income. This is something the IRS is focusing on. They've said they're coming out and looking at self-directed IRAs for these exact types of transactions that have taken place. Let's look over at the solo 401k. Solo 401k, Debt is non-taxable. So in this example here, you know, let's say that we had 70, 30, 70 debt, 30 uh, came from the plan itself. It does not matter. Debt is not subject to taxation in a solo 401k. It's only subject to taxation inside of an IRA. And what you call this over here is UDFI, unrelated debt financed income is the term that we use here. So you have UDFI over on that side. All right, so debt is, is a big one uh, when it comes to utilizing these plans. Another thing is how about uh, pooling accounts? You know, with, with IRAs, you can not pool accounts, so there's no pooling. And what I mean by that, a lot of times when we're dealing with real estate investors, both spouses have an IRA, and they would like to use those funds collectively together to go out and purchase real estate. But the problem is, you can't do it. IRAs are individual retirement accounts. So each spouse must create their own self-directed IRA. Then they can go together through these two separate IRAs and buy a piece of property, which many times what they'll do is create a limited liability company to form a joint venture to acquire it. As you can see, this can become expensive and complicated to put that type of structure together. However, with a solo 401k plan, you can pool accounts. So if we create an entity, say a corporation, both spouses now become an officer of that corporation. We then in turn create a solo 401k off of our corporation. We are now both participants in that solo 401k so we can roll our IRAs into our solo 401k, put the monies into one account, and then we can use that to invest with. So you can then take monies from separate IRAs and put them together. You cannot do that over here, but you can do that inside of a uh, solo 401k. What about tax returns? Okay, so self-directed IRAs, great. You do not have to file a tax return. No tax return needs to be filed uh, on an annual basis with a self-directed IRA, unless of course you're using anything that's taxable inside of there. However, with a solo 401k, you must file an annual 5,500 tax return if your account balance is over $250,000. So depending on the size of your IRA or your, your solo 401k that is, if your account balance, that is you know all the money you've rolled into there, exceeds $250,000, then you have to file a tax return. So this is a cost to file this return. This return is typically gonna run you about $700 to complete. So that's an expense you have over here that you do not have over on this side. So you could have $500,000, a million dollars in a self-directed IRA and you don't have to file a tax return. But over here, once you get above 250, then a return, tax return is gonna have to be filed. So when you're looking at it from a cost standpoint, you know, I would say self-directed IRAs, 
they're going to get the benefit on this one because they don't have to file a return. But then I'd also uh, compare that against what the annual fees are because most third-party administrators, the custodians of your funds, they're going to charge you an annual fee to hold those monies. Uh, they may charge you a per transaction fee. So you add up what that might amount to, and it may be that those fees on an annual basis exceed what it is to set up a solo 401k and file a tax return if you're above the $250,000 range. So again, it, we, we want to look at the value of the accounts and what the ongoing costs are. So if, uh, the last thing I want to talk about, uh, differences between these two, is asset protection. So when it comes to self-directed IRAs, if you make one mistake in your plan, you engage in one prohibited transaction, the whole plan now is disqualified and everything that's inside of there now becomes taxable to the account holder. So this is a problem, especially for people who deal with real estate. You know, there's a lot of complicated rules on how you can utilize IRA funds when it comes to alternative types of investments, such as real estates and notes and things like that, that I was discussing. And if you screw it up, then your account is now disqualified. So take this for example, let's assume that I had $600,000 in my IRA and I buy a house for $50,000 and I go out there and I make a mistake because I decide I'm going to paint the house on my own to save a few bucks. Well, if I do make that mistake by painting that $50,000 house, adding my services to that house, which amount to say $3,000, that's how much I could have had it painted for. I've now disqualified my entire IRA and the entire amount, five, $600,000 is now taxable to me plus penalties and early withdrawal taxes that would go on top of that, depending on my age, uh, if I'm under 59 and a half. So over here, you have a problem when it comes to, you can have all those assets distributed down to you. So when we think about it from an asset protection standpoint, if I was suing you and you live in a state that actually exempts exempt IRAs from your creditors, and not all states do this. If you look down in the notes uh, for this video, I will list out those states that do not provide asset protection for IRAs. So if I sued you and I showed that you made a mistake with your IRA, you engaged in a prohibited transaction, then I could have access to those funds, even if you lived in a great state that offers asset protection for your IRAs. So here, the asset protection is limited. Uh, with a uh, self-directed IRA, plus you have the problem of taxation if you screw it up. Whereas with the solo 401k, there's no tax, uh, or not, that's a bad way to, to state that. With a solo 401k, uh, the, the tax on a mistake is limited. So in the example I gave you with the $50,000 house, what happens in that instance is that the plan is not disqualified. If you made that mistake, then you would have to pay tax on the value of your contribution. So $3,000, that would be a taxable event to your solo 401k. Not the entire $500,000 that's inside of there. That wouldn't now all become taxable to you. So when you're using a solo 401k, the plan doesn't shut down. Whereas with the IRA, the plan shuts down if you screw up. Here it stays intact. Um, the other benefit of ha having this plan as well is if you get sued, here you have what are called ERISA protections. Okay, ERISA. Employee Retirement Income Security Act applies. So we're not so focused on state law. Now we're focused on federal law. And federal law exempts retirement plans from an individual participant's creditors. O.J. Simpson is a classic example of this. I mean, although that was a bad scenario that set all this up, you know, his federal pension plan is exempted from the Browns and the Goldman's wrongful death judgment because it's covered under ERISA. So if you got sued as an individual, not because you did anything like that, but let's say you're involved in a car accident, somebody sues you, they're not going to be able to come after your plan and take it from you because you're covered under ERISA. They're not going to be able to allege that you painted the house over here, so now your plan's disqualified and they can gain access to it. Your plan's going to be protected. So if I were to look through all of these, and I was going to make a choice, and I'm in your position right now, higher contributions, I'm going to give the nod to the solo 401k. On the amounts of money that you want to take out of the plan, here you can take out an unlimited amount, but it's only for 60 days. Here you're limited to 50K for 60 months. So it really depends on what you're doing. I think both of these then are equal in their own right when it comes to the benefits. I like having this unlimited access to funds, but if I know I don't need it, over here I can take out $50,000 and I have 60 months to pay it back. So maybe you want a little extra money on the outside to do things with. This is gonna give you a longer time because I know sometimes you get into deals 
And if you don't meet that 60 day requirement to get that money back in, then all those funds are taxable. So you have to be really careful how you put those funds to use outside of your plan. Control, most definitely gonna go with the solo 401k. <clears throat> in this side over here, you don't have control. I mean, the self-directed uh, IRA uh, terminology that they use, it's really misleading. I mean, yes, you can, you can direct the investments, but you can direct a traditional IRA as well. Let's say you set up with Charles Schwab and you wanna buy stock in Apple. All you gotta do is log in online and you can place that stock order. So it's the same type. Actually, you probably have more control with a traditional IRA in a stock investing scenario than you do with a self-directed IRA because you can actually make the trade. Whereas over here, you can't buy the house. You have to let your custodian handle that transaction for you. Whereas with the pension plan, solo 401k, you make all those decisions. You're in complete control. I give it over here. Uh, using debt and taxability of the plans, most definitely you're going to be on this side. There's too many problems here inside of the IRA. There's just different rules that apply. They're going to tax you if, you if you go down the wrong road there. Pooling money, well, we know we can do that with a, a 401k. It gives us an opportunity. I use the word spouse, but you have a business partner. You can put your money together inside of the plan so you can have more assets available for investing. Um, tax return over here, costs. Well, you're, I'd probably throw that one over here to the self-directed IRA. It does not have to file a return. And so if, I, if you were working with us and you said, Clint, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna buy two or three rental properties in my IRA and that's it, and that's all I intend to invest in, I'm not gonna do anything with them, they're turnkey properties. Well, if that's what you wanted to do and you're gonna hold them for 15 years, 20 years, then I would probably go with the self-directed IRA because you're not gonna need to make any decisions. You, once you buy them, your uh, third-party administrators handle the transaction for you, you're just gonna sit back and let the rents roll in. So from that standpoint, it may be less expensive to go with this entity. However, balance that against this last one down here, and that has to do with asset protection. Your IRA is not fully protected from your personal creditors. So if you're out there, you're running other businesses, you're doing things on the side, and you think you might get sued, and you definitely want to go with the solo 401k and the ERISA protections and the IRS protections that it provides that the IRA does not. So as you see here, there's different options you have. I'm always going to flow onto this side until they change the rules with respect to IRAs. And in fact, the last point I didn't even get into is that IRS is looking at these. They're not looking at these. They're looking over here. And so you don't want to be caught up in some IRS audit as a result of using your funds for real estate investing because that's what they're focused on. If you want any more assistance with this, give us a call at Anderson Business Advisors. We can help set these plans up for you to give you the flexibility now to take your retirement proceeds and put them forward to grow these accounts for your retirement future. My name is Clint Coons with Anderson Business Advisors.